What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Nick 4K video. So usually on this channel, I mostly do like movies and tier lists and stuff like that, but I'm gonna try to do more video game stuff. And what better than to start with the PS5 Pro announcement. Now, before we check out the full presentation, let me just say that I am much more of a PC gamer. I do have a PlayStation 5, I have a Switch, I have an Xbox. I'm not very biased towards either of them. I just want good games. And some have good games sometimes, sometimes they have bad games. So I just kind of go back and forth. Overall though, I'm more of a PC gamer. So I'm unbiased here. I'm gonna check this out. Let's see if it's good. Oh, and maybe I should preface this as well. Um, I have not seen anything on the PS5 Pro so far. At the time of recording this, this thing was just announced like a few hours ago. This is what I think. PS5 Pro. It's gotta be better, obviously. It should be better, right? You'd think so. But the most important thing it has to be like 600 bucks. I don't know if they can go higher than 600, maybe like 650, something along those lines. I think anything above that is just too much, especially when you can get like a PS5 for the most part, like used even for like 400 bucks, maybe even less than like 350 at this point. So the PS5 Pro, regardless of what extra enhancement it has, unless it has something that's super crazy that changes the game, anything over 600 bucks can be hard to sell. With that said, Let's jump in. Hi, I'm Mark Cerny. I'm excited to be here to talk about the newest addition to our console lineup, PlayStation 5 Pro, and how it advances gaming technology. But first, I want to take just a minute to look at what we put in the original PlayStation 5 and how it delivers an exceptional gaming experience. When PS5 debuted in 2020, it brought a lot to the table. Eight Zen 2 CPU cores form the brains of PlayStation 5 and enable high-speed complex gameplay with character counts reaching into the hundreds and frame rates that can be as high as 120 frames a second. PS5 has a powerful RDNA 2 GPU which can render anything from intricate details to fantastic worlds with vast panoramas to explore. Ray tracing allows for dramatic visual improvements, including reflections off of water or glass, and the realism that comes from real-time global illumination. A custom SSD can load data at breathtaking speed, resulting in ultra-fast transitions between game worlds and data streaming rates so high that traversal speeds are essentially unlimited. You okay? I'm working on it! Tempest 3D Audio Tech brings an unparalleled sense of immersion to the sound of the games. With audio so real, you may not even need to see the enemies to know exactly where they are. Finally, the DualSense controller has haptics that let you feel through your hands what your character is experiencing inside of the game. It's wonderful to see such variety and richness of game experiences. Creators have made amazing use of the hardware capabilities, but when I talk to them, I do hear about their desire for more graphics performance. The dreams of the developers are bigger than can be supported at 60 frames per second, and that leads to an aspect of modern gaming that we're all familiar with, graphics modes. It can be a difficult choice for players. Okay, real quick, before we jump in here, the graphics modes are one of those things that was always so annoying with the consoles, and that's why I think the fidelity and performance like he's probably about to talk about right now that has really been a thing for a lot of gamers that have pushed them to the pc format because with pc you can have both you have the fidelity and you have the performance where with the consoles you have to kind of choose now for me i will always choose performance over fidelity it is now 2024 i mean even going back to 2020 i'd say with this but it's 2024 Every video game should be 60 FPS at least. If you want pretty graphics, you have to get 30 FPS. If you want um, faster gameplay, then you get 60 FPS, but then you know, you'll know you lose some of that fidelity. But for me, that was a really rough trade-off because for a lot of gamers that I've seen, people who, who came from the PS4, who came to the PS5, who were playing the fidelity, didn't bother them, right? But for me, I was in the PC space for a long time. I know what high refresh rates are, I've had them for a long time. So when I picked up the new consoles, I went to go play them. That was a big issue for me. Having to go back to 30 FPS for the best graphics was just rough. And I know it's one of those things where even the performance, the graphics were fine, but in a lot of ways, I want the best of the best. And as a consumer, I'm allowed to think that way, right? 
It's not my problem to figure out what their issues are. Regardless of if you love Sony or you hate Sony or you love Microsoft, or hate Microsoft, or even if you love or hate Nintendo, end of the day, it is not us as a consumer. It is not our problem to figure out their tech issues, right? That's it. Give me the best for my money. And maybe the PS5 Pro is going to solve that. I guess we'll find out. Fidelity modes emphasize the visuals, typically through higher resolution rendering. These modes might also have enhanced detail or use more ray tracing. But the games only run at 30 frames per second. The visuals can be choppier and the controls less responsive. But everything looks nicer. Emphasize frame rate and interactivity, typically choosing to run at 60 frames per second. I love this game. by reducing the graphical detail until those frame rates can be achieved. Okay, I'm gonna say this. I had a PS5 since launch, and the best game so far on the PS5, I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna put this down in the statement right now. The best game that came out on the PS5, all right, at launch and till to this day, is Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. That is still the best PS5 game I have played so far. I think out of all the PS5 games I played over the last few years, and I played all the exclusives. If I can get them on PC, I'll buy them on PC, obviously. But for just PS5, I think that Rift Apart knew what was going on with this uh, this PlayStation 5 tech and like the strengths and the weaknesses. And I think out of all games, that was the one, even till this day, that figured it out and did like an amazing job. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say that I might get some hate for this, and you might say, well, it's because of the cartoony look or whatever. I don't care. Like I said, not my problem, not your problem. It is not the consumer's problem. It is the, the people who are making the product, who are selling it, who have to figure it out. And the team behind Ratchet and Clank, they figured it out. The game ran great. And even like the performance and the fidelity modes weren't actually even that different. One of those things with other video games, you have to sacrifice one or the other, right? But they figured it out. So whatever whatever they're doing, the, the studio behind Ratchet and Clank, that's what it's about. Let's figure out what they're doing and then we go from there in my opinion. When asked to decide on the mode, players are choosing performance about three quarters of the time. 100%. Removing that decision, or at least narrowing that divide, is one of the key targets for PlayStation 5 Pro. Like I said earlier, 30 FPS for games in 2024 is just inexcusable. I understand the argument if you wanted to like say like, oh, what about side scrollers? You don't necessarily need, yeah, okay, I get that. But games in general need to be hitting 60 FPS, so. Developers need to figure out a way to hit that. Um, I get some hate sometimes when I say that, but that's just the truth. I want to give players the graphics that the game creators aspire to at the high frame rates that players typically prefer. To do that, PS5 Pro substantially improves over PlayStation 5 in three ways. Here's what we call the big three. Okay. First, we made the GPU much larger and increased the speed of the memory it uses. That'll help. The result is rendering that's up to 45% faster. Oh, yeah. Second, we made major upgrades to the ray tracing, taking a streamlined and accelerated approach that allows calculation of the rays at double or even triple the speeds of PlayStation 5. Sounds and good. And finally, we added custom hardware for machine learning and an AI library called PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, or PSSR for short. PSSR analyzes the game images pixel by pixel and can add an extraordinary amount of detail, which boosts the effective resolution of the games. Game creators That's are smart. PS5 Pro support to new and existing titles. And with the big three involved, the results can be pretty amazing, with graphics showing something like fidelity levels of detail, but it doubled the frame rate. Here's The Last of Us Part 2 running on PS5 Pro. So all that stuff sounds really cool, but how does it actually look? It has huge amounts of detail and targets a super smooth 60 frames per second. Let's compare this to the fidelity mode on PS5, which is only running at 30 frames per second and is therefore much choppier. Yeah, that's choppy, nope, nope. Not this goal of delivering almost fidelity-like graphics at performance frame rates has been achieved for a broad set of titles, including Marvel's Spider-Man 2 and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. We can see that PS5 Pro is close to doubling the power of PlayStation 5. Another way to compare the two consoles is to look at PS5 Pro versus performance mode on PS5. It does look both better. Which target 60 frames per second. 
What we see here is a difference in detail. PS5 Pro is much sharper and crisper than PS5. Okay, yeah, there's definitely some differences here. As you can see, you can almost make out what this is saying, almost make out what that is saying. The windows are actually windows. There's some more blurry right here. You can actually read this. Can't read that. Well, you can kind of read that, but not nearly as good. Yeah, I mean, it looks good. I mean, I that's a that's an improvement. You know what I'm saying? This is performance mode, obviously, with the fidelity that probably fixes that. So if I can have the fidelity and the performance in one, that is pretty good. Making a good case For so this, far. This my favorite is the parade scene from Ratchet and Clank. Distant details are much clearer. Okay, let's check out this. Okay, yeah, for sure. The, the one on the right is way better. Way better. You can see every single detail with all these guys. Well, not every single detail, but it's a lot better. Yeah. Even, like, look at this line right here. This just kind of disappears within this whole mush. And this, you can see that line continue right there. It does kind of look like it's obviously um, artificially making some... Not, not making lines, but um, sharpening to help with that. And he already mentioned about that AI upscaling. So... That's one of those things like we, you pause it, you zoom in, you can see that, right? But if we don't zoom in and we just kind of, you know, we're looking at it normally like the way we would if we're playing the game, it would look even better. But all this comes down to one thing. This is cool, right? But what's the price? Because <laughs> for an extra hundred bucks, I think this price makes sense. For anything more, I don't know. And here we can see Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is noticeably higher resolution throughout the scene. Let's check this out. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yeah, definitely looks better, for sure. I mean, there are different vehicles on this, this thing, but it's the same time of day. Yeah, for sure. Including the trees and procedural cars. So overall, some remarkable improvement to the games. On PS5 Pro, we can see increased sharpness to the graphics or smoother and more responsive gameplay. This is the big three showing their value. As you've been seeing, machine learning via the PSSR library is being used quite broadly to add pixel detail and boost frame rate. But there are as many approaches as there are game engines. The increase in raw GPU power is being especially effective for Horizon Forbidden West. Apart from the detail boost, that extra graphics power is allowing for improvements to lighting and visual effects. You know, this is the one game out of all like the PS5 exclusives I have and I haven't played yet. I, I mean, this is the second one. The first one I, I, I played a little bit of. This one I hear good things about, just not have yet to play it. So I have to definitely check it out. It looks really pretty. I think it's on PC now, or it's coming to PC. So for a lot of things, when it comes to PlayStation's exclusives, I kind of backed off of those a little bit because they eventually come to PC and I can get the 100% graphics I want anyways. So I just usually wait. Um, but yeah, that looks, that looks good. That's pretty good for a console. As well as to the hair and the skin in cinematics. Open up, guys. Dwarf's orders. Good enough for me. Ray tracing is finding broad usage as well, particularly when the games are focused on higher frame rates. The faster hardware in PS5 Pro can make a real difference. Allowing Gran Turismo 7 to add ray traced reflections between the cars in gameplay, while continuing to support their targeted 60 frames per second. That boost in ray tracing is also delivering big wins for Hogwarts Legacy. Okay, I was gonna say for driving games, those are always those all look good. You know, driving games when they when they first come out, they all look good. So it's just one of those things where that's not that big of a deal. But this this looks good, like with those reflections right there. That's an example of like fidelity mode compared to performance. And performance, this would still probably be here from a certain point of view. It'd be like light shades, but it wouldn't actually be like a reflection. So it'd just be kind of like a big blur. Where like in fidelity mode, you can actually see the reflection on the tiles. That's cool. That's the type of stuff we should be improving when it comes to this tech for sure. Ray tracing Allowing stuff. not only for better reflections and a greater variety of reflective surfaces, but also for further realism in the casting of shadows. I hope you've enjoyed this run through of the technology behind PlayStation 5 Pro. 
Simply put, it's the most powerful console we've ever built and a worthy addition to the PS5 family. All right, what's the price? Let me wrap this up by giving you a quick look at a number of games running on the new console. You'll never break a legend. All right, I don't want to get hit by copyright, so let's... Um... Okay, so here is the PS5 Pro. Um, looks pretty cool. It definitely looks like a Pro model. It's definitely like a... Um... There was a slim version that came out for the PS5 already. It's kind of like a bigger one of that. Makes sense. People really seem to like the slim look more than the original PlayStation 5 look, which is cool. Yeah, it looks cool. Now my question is, it runs games better. It looks better. What's the price? PS5 Pro. Vertical stand sold separately. Well, glad they added that. I was, I was, I was worried for a second. Ooh, seven hundred bucks. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Seven hundred bucks for for the PS5 Pro. Oh, like I mentioned earlier, you gotta ask the question: If you're going to buy a PlayStation, let's say you don't have a PlayStation yet, if you're gonna buy a PlayStation. And you see this, and you see this. And this one only costs you probably 400 bucks used, maybe 350 if you, you find a deal somewhere. Overall, 400 bucks at least to get this. And you see this, and this one is $700 plus tax, at least 760. 760 versus 400. Don't get me wrong, the PS5 Pro looks good. That looks good, but is it worth an extra $300? For me, it's not. I'm sure there's some people out there who are watching this and thinking this is amazing, and that's cool. I'm glad you, you like this, but um, I don't know. That's just not enough of a jump for me for, for an extra $300. This is Performance RT. That still looks really good, man. I don't know. For an extra 250 bucks to $300, that's not worth it, in my opinion. If it was a flat $600, that's one thing. But when it comes to this, like this is this is rough, guys. You know, you can still game. You got all that stuff in there. You got 600 bucks. And then like, um, you know what? Where's the disk drive on this thing? Are they going all digital with this? Did you really just drop an all digital PS5 Pro for $700 after tax 760 to 780? Oh, that's rough. I don't know. Oh, I know Sony boys. I know Sony boys love, love the Sonys, but that's rough. I might be wrong. I might be the only person thinking this is a bad call, but this is a rough call for sure. You're telling me no disk drive and no stand? I cannot stand for this. Like for me, I like to have physical media, no disk drive. For some people, they don't care about that. For me, that's an instant no buy. Instantly no buy. All right, so small updates. Um, as I was editing the video, I had discovered that you can actually buy the disk drive for this $700 console. It's only going to cost you an extra 80 bucks. So there you go. You're welcome. <laughs> but what do you guys think? Do you think that this is a bad idea? Or do you like this idea? Are you already pre-ordered? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. If pre-orders drop for this, I'm actually going to leave a link to that down there in the description. So go ahead and use that link when you buy and help out the channel. But uh, that's it for now, guys. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like this, make sure to like, subscribe, turn notifications for more. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you later. Peace.